So let's take a look under the hood. To open, there's a small posi screw in each corner. And once they're out, we can pull on this little tab. Ooh, nice. As we can see here, there's a larger heat sink on the right, and also a fan in the center, so we have active cooling. To pull out this top plate, we need to remove three more screws, and this comes right off. Just be careful though, as the fan is still connected. The inside of this looks fairly clean. At the bottom here, we have two sticks of DDR5, which means we're running on dual channel, and both seem to be crucial branded. Over here, we have the PCI4 NVMe stick, and there's an extra slot on the end if you want to expand storage. And then there's also a chip for the Wi-Fi. We can of course remove or upgrade memory if we wish. And what's pretty strange is they've added this thin graphene heat tick. If it were thicker and had fins, it might have been useful, but all this will do here is block in the heat. And what do you know? It's crucial. 15 gigs of DDR5600. Just remember if you remove this, you can't easily... Ah, what a mess. Let's have a look at the NVMe storage, and it's a Kingston PCIe Gen 4. A reasonably decent budget brand. If you want to use the outer storage slot, or the other size 5 hex socket. We can just pop it in. But enough of that, we want to get in there. Two more screws holding the board. We also want to take out this Wi-Fi chip. An Intel AX210. Now we can remove the board. We do need to bend the case a little bit, but with a bit of force, we can get it out. Now to unplug the fan. 